Hi everyone, welcome to It's Tea Time and it's beautiful in San Francisco today. I'm super excited about my guest, Jeff Taylor. Um, we are doing another episode of the Phoenix Chronicles. And for those of you who don't know what the Phoenix Chronicles, it's where I interview people and have people share their stories where they have risen from the ashes, you know, where they've had challenges, challenges that were pretty big in their life and how they were uh, able to overcome these challenges. I feel like during these times, uh, we've definitely had a lot of challenges. Um, so I feel like this is a way to uplift uh, you and to uplift others um, and to see like how you can overcome, you know, some really difficult challenges in your life. Um, Jeff is somebody, um, he's a friend of mine and uh, he's got like some really interesting life experiences and he's also one of the most positive people I know despite everything that he's been through. And this is why I really wanted to do Phoenix Chronicles with him because after everything he's done, he's so positive. So, welcome, Jeff. Hi, thank Hi. you, T. Yeah, yeah. So um, please share, share. You know, something that you feel like might be able to inspire or motivate others, because uh, I know you've been through a lot of things. So, pick something <laughs> and <yeah>. share, please. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I guess there is a lot to go with. I think. Um, I don't know. There were a few. Uh, times where where uh, I guess life was hard enough that I had to change the way that I think so I had to kind of find some way of looking at life or the universe uh, that that I could be, be able to be positive and be happy in um, so I think I'll probably pick one of those times um, so I mean, I've had various uh, experiences with spirituality, or um, I know one time when I was uh, really suffering from depression, uh, uh, actually reading uh, about existentialism helped me get through, uh, especially like uh, Nietzsche and uh, Kierkegaard, um, and, or, or Camus. Uh, I, I know that's not something that people often hear. <laughs> But I, I actually found uh, existentialism to be uh, a really kind of empowering. You know, you are in charge of your own existence. Like the the way that you um, approach life, you're you're the one that decides it. You're the wrong one that writes your story. I mean, you've got the the physical material, but the text that you put down that's that's up to you. So uh, that was that was inspiring to me. Um, I think I'm going to go with probably. Uh, the the experience that I actually looked at as my as my Phoenix uh, period, which uh, it was a few years ago, it was uh, 2000 between 2015 and 2017. I think 2016 is what I I called it, my Phoenix year, and that uh, it was uh, when I was going through a divorce uh, when, when my first marriage was ending, uh, and obviously that's never an easy time for anybody. Uh, there were a number of uh, contributing factors that made, made it more difficult uh, because I had just moved to um, Hawaii and, uh, and so I didn't really know very many people and I'd also just been given a lot more responsibility at work and so I was kind of struggling with handling that. And I was also working on my doctoral dissertation which was probably one of the most uh, stressful <laughs> things so there was like getting a hit from a lot of directions at once. Um, so let's see. Yeah, when I first uh, moved out, I, it was it was one of the hardest things to do. You know, I'd really been kind of having a a difficult marriage for for a long time, and I don't really want to talk too much about that because I don't want to say anything bad about my ex. I mean, every, everybody has their own problems, and not everybody's compatible. Um, but it was hard for me to really justify, you know, I, I have kids, I have four kids, and they're wonderful, and they all really wanted us to both be there for them, and uh, it was hard for me to justify leaving, um, but, but at a certain point, uh, I could see that the, the kids saw what was happening between me and my ex, and, and, um, and my oldest would cry, uh, 
and you know, I didn't want her to feel like it would it was okay. I didn't want my daughter to end up getting married or being in a relationship and then thinking, oh, well, it's this is normal. This is how my parents were, and it's okay. Um, and that that was the point where I decided that it was really I needed to do it because it was in the best interest of my kids. I needed to move out. Um, you know, the, their their mom is a good person. She's a good person. It just uh, I I don't know what it was between us two. But um, I mean, she definitely wasn't happy about me moving out, uh, even though she's the one who told me to do it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's funny, funny how that works. Um, gosh, uh, the first place I moved into was like an 80 square foot room, and uh, no, no, that's not true. They have uh, I'm active duty military, and so at that at that point they had this. Um, I, I for what, what do they call it? It was like a, a cool down room. That's what it is. So if uh, you were having trouble at home, I, I think it was something to pre uh, prevent d domestic violence, which wasn't the the case uh, with with us. But uh, if you if you're having trouble at home, you could get a cool down room for ten days, and basically it's like a really bad barracks room. <laughs> and uh, I moved everything. I put everything into my van, and. Um, moved into the cool down room and only discovered it didn't have Wi-Fi uh, wow. or air conditioning. <laughs> but that was fine because um, I got to work right away. Going, I went to the McDonald's and got on the internet and started trying to find a place. And that's how I find that. <coughs> I found that uh, 80 square foot room. Ended up being one of my favorite places I ever lived. But uh, it did evolve kind of a real change of perspective. I, I'd been living in a four bedroom house, you know, with the Navy housing allowance covering it and uh, having to really adapt my way of thinking. And that I, I started to embrace minimalism. I thought, you know what? This is my chance to really see um, like what, what the basic thing is, what do I need to be happy? Like, you know, that's, Let's kind of try to leave everything behind that that I can't really identify as something that makes me happy, and uh, it, it ended up being uh, you know books, my books, my uh, musical instruments, uh, my computer. You know, I, I didn't really need very much. I had a little bit of artwork uh, in, in the room, and uh, it was uh, it was enough because I didn't really plan on spending too much time in the room. I wanted to get out and be with people. And uh, you know, be able to have the kind of you know human interaction that was really hard to have when you're in a when when you're in a bad relationship. If anybody has been in that situation, you know that um, that when you're in a, a bad relationship, it kind of isolates you from other people because that just you know going out and spending time with friends tends to exacerbate the problems at home. Um, so yeah, I didn't I didn't plan on spending very much time at home, and I and I didn't. So so it was it was a good time. It was a very um, it, it it was a little more austere than I uh, ever planned on going back to. But um, but I did learn a lot about about really that the, there's a lot of things that people think that you need to be happy that you really don't need, and that you can actually be a happy person on a very um, it, it doesn't take that much money, resources. You know, I was trying to save as much money as possible because I was, uh, one thing I, I swore to myself is that I would never fail to, to be able to support my kids. I'd be, i always make sure that, you know, whatever it was that, that I needed to be doing with support, that I would, that I would do it. Um, so... It's kind of hard to do because you know if you just want to use your own judgment um, you know if, if you're a generous person you're gonna like give, give them everything and then have barely enough to, to survive um, and if you're a greedy person then you're not gonna give your kids enough and I figured that the only way around that was that I needed to have some kind of an official standard you know some kind of a legal reference point um, the, the only thing I had to go by at first was, excuse me, <coughs> um, 
um, <clears throat> Navy legal. So I guess the, the military has this guideline that calculates like the number of kids you have and how much your income is and blah, blah, a bunch of stuff. And there's a formula that tells you how much support you need to give. And so I, I made sure I was doing that. Um, it was a lot, but but that, that was fine. I did I did learn a lot by being by myself. Um, and what I started to notice was um, be, being out of that relationship. Uh, so the divorce dragged on for a couple of years, but being moved out, having filed, and being able to go out and interact with people again, um, I started to really. It, it, it was uh, it was an extremely liberating feeling. <clears throat> Not, not having to worry about the conflict all the time or, or uh, you know, like not upsetting her or, you know, me getting upset and stuff she did and just just being able to be on my own. Um, it, it, I think that happens to a lot of people soon after a breakup, especially if they're the one that initiated it, you feel free for a while. And, and then after that, you start to feel lonely again and then you're like, okay, I need to get in a relationship but this was this was a 20-year marriage so it took me a while to get to that point um, I discovered that I wanted to be a much nicer person than I had been um, that I wanted to be you know that I wanted to be a good person um, I mean I think I wanted to before but I mean when you're really you're angry and depressed all the time it, it's a lot harder <coughs> excuse me um, and, you know, I think it was somewhere along the line um, at, at that point, uh, I, was, I was dating somebody. Um, I, I, don't want, I don't know if I want to go into that story. Um, it, it started with, you, you know, I saw somebody that had a tattoo in a, in a bar and I asked, you know, it looked like a Hindu deity and I asked who it was and she didn't know. And, and, and ended up with a conversation that led to me wanting to find out a lot more about the Hindu goddess Kali, you know, that I'd had a passing interest in before. But, um, so I, I'd heard of Kali before when I did this, I, I did this book on Tate, Great Courses uh, deal on Hinduism. And uh, my, my takeaway was that there's a lot of misunderstanding about Kali in the West. Uh, and she has this reputation for being this like capricious, cruel, you know, goddess of death and, and violence. And, and um, it's not true at all. Uh, so I'm not going to say that that hasn't happened in Hinduism or in India because uh, the, the thing about Hinduism is that it's so diverse that uh, no, no two practices are the same. So, I mean, there are as many different understandings of Kali as there are people. But that most people that revere Kali uh, revere her not as, uh, you, you know, as somebody kind, as somebody that really cares about you, you know, uh, but not, not somebody that you can appeal to or control. Uh, I've been Christian most of my life, and it, Christians are really big on praying, and, you know, um, you want something you pray for it and I think may, maybe uh, there's uh, a, a lot of Christians out there they're, they're like well you should just pray for God's will to be done and that you can do God's will but then there's also a lot of other Christians that are like I hope I, you know I pray again a new bicycle for Christmas or I pray <laughs> that um, that my um, dad is cured of cancer or you know like petitionary prayers um, and what I learned about Kali was that she does not um, she doesn't give you what you want. She doesn't give you what you ask for. Uh, she doesn't give you what you're hoping for or what you expect. But if you can embrace uh, the unexpected, if you can embrace the things that come to you in your life that that you're not sure about, that, that, that you didn't think were what you wanted, um, and, and try to see the good in it, that, that a lot of times that turns out to be much better than, than anything that you could have come up with yourself. And I found that to be true in my life multiple times. Um, you know, I, even if I go back to looking at um, when I first got married, you know, I, I can look back and say that it was a mistake that I married who I did. I mean, there were a lot of red flags 
Um, I did rush in to the relationship and I, I was young. I, I went against uh, the advice of people that cared about me. Um, but, you know, I, I did what I did. It's, you know, I didn't do it out of like malice or anything like that. It was just, it was dumb. But, but if I hadn't done it, my life wouldn't be like it is now. I, and I'm, I'm really happy right now. And, uh, you know, I, my, my wife was from Austria. And shortly after we got married, she got homesick and wanted to go to Austria. And so I ended up living in, a, in another country and learning another language and having the most unforgettable experience that has really changed my perspective and shaped who I am to this day. And it's an experience that I never would have had that I never would have had if I hadn't married what, you know, somebody might be tempted to call the wrong person, you know, but that's, I, it's not, I don't think it's the right way to look at it, you know, because I wasn't the right person at that time either. I mean, you know, I can say, oh, I married somebody bad, but, you know, I could just as easily say, say that she did. She married somebody bad because, you know, I, I had a lot of growing that I needed to do. And I, I think that you really, it's hard for somebody to find the right person uh, when you're not the right person yet. Yeah. So part of that growth was, was living in another country, was uh, the humility of seeing that there are people that have completely different way of living and thinking. And, um, you know, we, we might think that uh, the way that we do things in America is normal and we look at other countries and say um, oh that's weird you know in this country they wear this kind of shoes or they you know they sleep in the afternoon or whatever you know and we think it's weird until we go until you go live there and then you realize that now you're weird now now I'm the weird American living in Germany you know thinking that refills in a restaurant should be free or ketchup should be free, you know, or, uh, you know, having a different kind of sense of humor, you know, think, um, I used to like use sarcasm as a kind of a way of lightening the mood and kind of, you know, kind of messing with, you know, just, uh, like bantering with people in a friendly way. Um, I don't really do that very much now, but I did back then. And I found out that in Austria, in, it's very offensive. Like even the least bit of sarcasm is very offensive. Oh, interesting. Um, you know, and and it, it was humbling. You know, I, at first I wanted to think, oh, they don't have a sense of humor, but uh, that's wrong. The Germans, Austrians have an amazing sense of humor. They, I listen to Austrian folk music and I'm rolling on the floor because yeah. of how funny it is. And, um, and, and it was an experience that I never would have had, you know, but, but it helped me to grow so much as a person, you know, and, and being in a difficult marriage, I believe helped me grow as well. You know, it helped me to learn patience, helped me to learn how to pick your battles and what things are worth um, fighting over and what, what things are not. Um, I had uh, spiritual experiences because of that, you know, I, uh, I became very de devoutly Catholic during during my marriage, uh, which I'm not Catholic now. Um, I don't, uh, there, there are some uh, things that I think are, are wrong with that um, particular belief system, but I don't have any bitterness toward it because I think over well it really, it was a positive experience for me because of what I learned about myself, what I learned about um, kind of I learned a lot about trying to, uh, what it takes to be a good person, about what it takes to really kind of forgo, um, not forgo yourself. Uh, I mean, so, so that was one of the things that I, I learned and, and then kind of unlearned later. But but there is a, 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 a big, you know, you learn a lot about why, why it's not worth it to kind of push what you want at the expense of other people. You know why it's not important to go first or get the you know get the biggest you know chicken wing on the plate or whatever you know yeah. you, you learn that there's things that are a lot more important than the things that you just that you want um, 
And so I think it was overall a positive experience and I learned a lot spiritually. Um, and it just, at the end, I, I feel like, um, you know, a lot, I feel like everybody is on their own spiritual path and they're at different places in, in uh, your development. And you just, you can't really point your finger at something and say, like, this is, um, you know, this is the right path and this person's right and that person's wrong. You never know where somebody else is. We're all at different points in our journey. And sometimes the people that you think are uh, way behind are actually way ahead of you. And you just, there's no way to know. Um, so I think it was the right path for me at that time. It really brought me a long way towards being a better person. Uh, but yeah, so like I said, I'm not, I'm not Catholic now and I'm not gonna go through like why um, well, I can say I, one of the big things was um, when uh, Proposition 8, when the, when the movement for uh, gay equal rights and uh, gay marriage uh, was really uh, starting to take full swing and, um, and that, that I saw that the church was against it and that people in the church were very much um, against gay people having uh, equal rights in marriage. And uh, that, that really, uh, I, I knew that that couldn't be right. I knew that that, like for all the right things that I learned and all the good things I learned, I, I knew that couldn't be right. Um, you know, and uh, I guess the real turning point was when I, I found myself thinking, yeah, you know, I mean, maybe this isn't true, but if I'm wrong, I'll go to hell. And then recognizing in that point that I was being spiritually blackmailed. Um, <laughs> so may, maybe not necessarily like intentionally by anybody, but by myself for sure. Anytime you find yourself in a situation where, oh, well, if I'm wrong, I'll go to hell. I mean, you could say that about any religion. What religion are you supposed to be so you can feel safe that you're not going to go to hell? Because I mean, there's so many out there that say, well, if you're this one, you know, you have to be this one. But I don't know, you, you, you still have to pick one and the odds are still against you. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, and also it's not good reasoning. It's not, you know, they call it the Pascal's wager, I guess, because Blaise Pascal was the one who first enunciated it. If it was some great insight, you know, oh, well, it's better to be religious. So you don't go to hell. <laughs> yeah. but, but I saw it as, no, that's not a good reason. There's got to be better reasons than that. And if I can't think of any, then I'm going to move on. Yeah, so anyhow, uh, let's go back to uh, not not being, you know, uh, embracing that experience. Um, That's okay. No, it's yeah. okay. I feel yeah. like I went on a tangent. So. Oh, no, 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 it's okay. Well, yeah. I mean, there's so many good nuggets that you kind of threw out there. So I, I, I really agree with, um, you know, we can't poo-poo on the bad experiences that we've had in life. Like, you know... Uh, me too. I'm divorced. I was in a marriage with uh, someone that I wasn't compatible with. And, you know, Kali, because, you know, I speak astrology, you speak more of like Kali or the Hindi, you know, language of, you know, um, experiences in life. And like in astrology, there is Saturn, which is what I always call the Grim Reaper planet. And it's the planet that doesn't care um, about how you learn lessons, but there are certain lessons that your soul needs to learn. So Saturn like throws challenges into your life so you can learn this lesson. And Saturn doesn't care if it's painful or, you know, Saturn's just like, this is a lesson that you need to learn. So I'm going to give you this challenge or experience and you're going to learn your lesson. And if you don't, it's just gonna re repeat itself and come back to you. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, uh, at least for myself, I'll speak for myself, but I know other people too, we kind of like become the victim and it's like, why is this happening to me? And a lot of times when we're stuck in the middle of, you know, the crisis that we're in or the challenge that we're in, we can't really see or we can't really see the lesson that needs to be learned from this experience. And so, you know, oftentimes, you know, I, I'll, ha I'll have people who call me while they're in the middle of their crisis. And I said, you know, like, take a step back and re perhaps right now you can't see, you know, the reason why you're going through what you're going through. But eventually the big picture is gonna to come to you um, and, and you're gonna see like why you went through it. And it's, I think for a lot of people, then they kind of get stuck in that rut of like being victim, 
they go into a deep depression and all of these things are normal you know I, both of us have been through that where you know we've gone into a deep depression we don't know how we're going to get out of it but I think the message is like you know like uh, at least for you and, and for me too is spirituality no matter what it is that you believe in a lot of times that can like really pull us out right it can really help to pull us out like for you you found Kali and um, you felt like you know who she is really resonated with who you are and you know for myself too like spirituality I found it um, I would say that it came to me in my early 20s and it's been an ongoing process but I always say that is what has really kept me going uh, in this lifetime you know with all of the experiences that have been thrown to me and so I really feel like spirituality is definitely um, you know something that can really help to pull you out of something that's really hard but it helps you to see the bigger picture and things too so I think that's really important um, and yeah like I always also talk about like soul contracts with my clients and friends where you know we have lessons we came into these human bodies where we actually wanted to experience what it's like to be a human and, and pain is one of those things and especially when it comes to family, uh, romantic partners, we have soul contracts with these people. And you know, so our souls get together uh, on, a, on a soul level and we're like, okay, these are the things that I wanna learn and I wanna experience. And then you have like the soul contract with this person and you guys are like, all right, I'm gonna be the person who's gonna challenge you or teach you these things. And so, but then at some point our souls, you know, this, the contract might be over or you have to look just like in real life, you know, like when you have a contract for something, it's time to like look at the contract again and then your souls can be like, well, I think what we had talked about, you know, we are fulfilling each other's soul contract and it's time to go our separate ways. Or maybe, you know, there'll be a renewal of the contract. Um, but that's the thing that's also hard is like life is full of changes. And so, you know, we do have soul contracts and, and it goes deeper than what you just see here in the physical plane. So, you know, you being with your wife and me being with my ex-husband, you know, there are things that we needed to learn from these relationships. But then there was also so many beautiful things that came out of it. You got to go to Austria, I got to spend lots of time in Sardinia and Italy. And, you know, it, it's just like, there's always, there's always, you know, things that we learn from these experiences. And then depression, I think that's something both you and I have in common too. And I feel like that's something that's being talked about more. Um, but you know, depression is a real thing. And you know, there, there are tools and there, there are ways to get out of uh, depression, which is, you know, um, is a, you know, he's sharing his story of how it's helped him to come out of his depression. And I really like that Jeff is also sharing you know, kind of like his journey from being a very devout Christian um, to finding spirituality. And I, I really love this story. And also, you know, like how, you know, he's, he's working on being a better person. You know, as humans, we're never fully cooked, but if we have an intention, if we have an idea of like where we want to go with ourselves, um, I really believe it's possible. We always are constantly learning, you know, thanks to Saturn or Kali, you know, they're always bringing these experiences onto our path that usually feel like they're usually like a pain in the butt or we don't want to deal with it. But there is a reason why these things are coming to us. It's, it's because, you know, we're humans and we're here to learn and to experience. And I feel like, you know, anytime you feel like you're going, you're, um, going through a challenge, if you can kind of step outside of yourself a little bit and be like, okay, so what is this lesson? Or what is this experience? Or what is it trying to tell me? Um, I, and, I, and I know it's really hard when you're stuck in it, but if you can take some like time to reflect and step outside of it and like really think about like, what is this trying to teach me about myself? Because usually it's a teaching for you, um, not about the other person or blaming them or, you know, it, it, it's usually um, a lesson for you to like the, that the universe, God, spirit, however you want to call it, is trying to, to convey to you. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And I, I remember when uh, you did my reading uh, that um, that was one of the things that we talked about because um, you told me that, that there were things that were going to happen in my life that were supposed to help me to to, to grow into the person that I needed to be. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's been validated by my experience. I, I've definitely found that 
to be true. Um, the, the thing that, um, I guess one of the key things that um, when I was reading about Kali and learned about Kali that, that really spoke to me was a lot of times that, that upsets people is that she destroys your attachments. It's that there are things in your life that are holding you back from being able to achieve um, enlightenment, being able to progress spiritually. And uh, they mostly come in the form of some kind of an attachment, some kind of a belief that there's something that you need to be happy or, or something that has to be a certain way. And that in order for you to move forward and, and to become a better person, to become happier, to, to become a greater soul, uh, that attachment needs to be removed. And it's not very comfortable when it happens. You know, and uh, but but that's what Kali does because she, in the end, she wants the absolute best for you that can possibly happen. And uh, you can either embrace it or you can fight it. Um, you're gonna get the help either way. Um, now, now that's not to say that when you when you face adversity in life, I think this is another thing that people get mixed up on. You know, when something bad happens, there are definitely things happen that are very wrong and very bad. And uh, you can't go back and reinterpret as, oh, well, this was actually a good thing. Um, but that's not the point because no matter what happens, there's always a right way to respond. There's, there's a right way to react to that. So, okay, this, terribly, this terrible thing happened. Uh, is my reaction gonna be that this was an adversity that I, that I faced and I overcome? Is this gonna be something that I, that I didn't let get me down? And, um, and you write that story, you know, it's about 95% of the life that we experience is the meaning that we attach to the physical world. You know, the, the physical world is, is pretty mundane and boring, but we attach meaning to it. And we get, we have things like beauty and love and, and, um, and, and me, all, all different kinds of meaning, you know, that have to do, and, and those are all in our heads, you know, or in our social consciousness. And they're still very real. Uh, that's not to say that they're made up or they're not real, but the things that are in your head, you have control over. And this is especially uh, important for somebody struggling with depression um, because you, you can have depression, you can suffer from depression and still be happy, um, but you really need to be careful about how you're writing your own story and the, th the way that you relate things that happen to you to other people, the way you think about it in your mind, the, the words that you choose to, to, to use, the, the, the way that you choose to focus on it. Uh, words are very powerful and positive self-talk, um, it sounds silly, but it goes a really long way in, in helping you to, to, to move on. And, and you know, a lot of people say, well, I can't be an optimist, I can't be positive all the time because I gotta be a realist and see how things really are. But you can see how things really are. And then the meaning that you attach to that can be positive. You can say, this is a challenge that I'm going to face and overcome, that I'm going to do the right thing, even though it's gonna cost me, you know? You can say, you, you can be the hero of your story or you can be the villain. You can be the person that, that faces adversity and overcomes it or, or does the right thing even when it's difficult. Or you can be the person that just uh, looks out for their own selfish um, wants and just steps on other people. And, and that's not going to progress you towards happiness. Yeah. Um, so, so writing that story, writing using the words, using that narrative and, and just doing the right thing, doing the next right thing is, uh, is so important. And, and, uh, and, and Kali helps you with that by throwing things in your way that you're not <laughs> expecting. And said, so, hey, what about this, you know? Like, you aren't expecting that. Okay, what were you gonna do, you know? It's so true, it's so true. I mean, you know, just astrologically, we're coming up with the eclipse season, but also with the way the planets are in alignment right now. I'm not gonna go into detail, but we're going through another period of endings. And so, you know, things are just gonna, with the solar eclipses in particular, uh, what they tend to do is whatever needs to end is gonna end, whether you like it or not. And it's, a lot of times it's gonna be unexpected. 
So it sounds, you know, once again, it's kind of like the Kali like energy where it's just like, look, you're done. This is not serving you, so you're done. And, you know, once again, it's just like, well, a lot of, you know, a lot of times, like, say, I don't know, you, you're going to experience a breakup and you didn't see it coming. And you're like, oh my God, I thought we were happy. I thought we were good. And then, you know, it's just like, nope, it's done. One partner is like, I'm over this. I can't stay. But, you know, yeah, there is something, there is something there. There is something there for you. And it's true, you know, one of the things I think for those of us who have suffered from depression when people try to pull us out of it, when we're in the thick of it, they're just like, you know, they, they think that it's just so easy to pull yourself out of it. And and I can attest to, to it, and maybe you can too. It's just like, I think you have, there, there's a level of acceptance, knowing that you're depressed and that you are going through shit. And that um, no matter what anyone says, or anything like that but at the bar at, at the end of the day it's you having to pull yourself out of it it's you acknowledging that I'm depressed and but I I want to be happy and you know so it's about like shifting your perspective you know rewriting your story and one of my favorite spiritual teachers is Abraham Hicks and they talk a lot about you know getting yourself into like a place where you feel good where, you, where you're being positive and if, even if it's little things, you know, one of the things I remember that helped to help get me out of um, depression was I would just do things that made me feel good. Even if it was little things like going out to get ice cream, you know, I wouldn't beat up on myself and you know, be like, oh, I'm going to get fat. I would be like, you know what? I want ice cream because it makes me feel good. Um, I love to exercise, you know, like making sure that I work out because I know that it always makes me feel good if I exercise. Um, being outside in the sun, you know, it's just like little things, little things that like cause that that really bring you happiness and whatever the, these little things are, you know, calling up your your best friend or whatever it may be, but just doing these little things and these little things eventually add up. And before you know it, you're feeling more positive about yourself. But I think a lot of the times it is kind of like the story that you create in your head. Um, I'm not going to name names, but you know, I've had people in my life who are kind of like a gloom and doom type of people. They're always expecting shitty things that are going to happen to them. And I don't want to blame them and be like, well, you brought that upon yourself. But I really do believe in the power of like positivity. And as cheesy as it may sound, you know, it's like, you know, thinking happy thoughts or having happy, positive mantras. But I do believe in energy and everything that we put out there is energy. It is energetic. And if I, I talk in like a vibrational levels, you know, if you're like, if you're working on a low vibrational level, then you're just going to continue to attract, you know, anything and everything that's, that's vibing at a low uh, vibrational uh, level. But energetically, if you're in a good place, if you're feeling good, this is what brings your energetic levels up. And as you do that, you know, you will attract, it's kind of like we're magnets, right? We want to attract things, you know, that, that are also, you know, what tends to be attracted to us is whatever's at, whatever energetic level we're vibing at. And so one of the th things I see often, and of course, you know, people have to experience what they have to experience, but I cannot tell you enough, like a lot of the people that I know that like can manifest the things that they want in their lives and they're, you know, they're happy, overall happy. These people generally are pretty positive people. You know, they're not people who are like downers and in life and are, are expecting bad things to happen to them. Actually, it's the opposite. You know, they, they see life in a really positive way. And, you know, even when shit happens, they're kind of like, okay, you know, that was shitty, but you know, I'm going to keep on moving forward instead of like, you know, dwelling on it and like replaying it over in their heads or, you know, just being like, oh, I can't believe this happened to me. And, you know, just kind of like letting that stuff just sit inside of you. So I, I also believe that that, that is um, something that, that's really can be difficult, especially if you tend to be more on the pessimistic side. But I do believe in the power of positivity. Um, yeah, and, and like for you, you know, there's been times, I think even with myself where I've vented with you, and then you always come out saying something really positive, and I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 that's true. That's that's true. Good point. You know? Like, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Thank you for sharing. Is there anything else that you kind of feel like is really important that you need to share that might help somebody out there? I mean, 
Well, there's a couple of things I thought of when you were talking. Like, yeah. you, you know, you talked about identifying the things that, that make you happy and doing things that make you feel good. Mm -hmm. um, I made a list. I had a little list that I made on my phone and it was like things like, oh, uh, bridges. Like for some reason, if I see a bridge, it makes me feel good. If I see water, you know, it makes me feel good. And, and just simple, the simplest things. But if it, if I felt that my mood was improved by something, I would, I put it on that list, you know, and I think about it later, or I might go out of my way to look at something if I, you know, if it was one of those things on the list. You don't really think about that that much. Well, that's awesome. I like and, that. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of happiness and, and feeling good has to do more with paying attention to what actually makes you happy rather than going after what you want, which a lot of times in the end is a disappointment when it comes to happiness. Um, and uh, so there was that. And then the other, the other thing, this is just kind of a silly thing, but you know, it, and, and uh, when, when stuff seems to be going wrong, I mean, if it's not something that's like obviously bad, like somebody being hurt or, you know, somebody being wronged, you know, if it's like um, one of those frustrations or inconveniences, like, a, like, um, uh, you, you, you can be like, I, I, I always, I always say, oh, well, this is exciting or, oh, hey, this is an adventure, you know? And I mean, it doesn't have to really be an adventure, you know, but that always for me that puts me in the frame of mind like <laughs> you know <laughs> this is ridiculous like why why am i stuck in traffic i don't know what's going on up there like <laughs> and i can laugh about it instead of getting mad you know because that's part of writing your own story is you can either be upset and angry that, that you're stuck in traffic or you can be you can laugh <laughs> about how silly it is you know, this yeah. is true. I need to harness that one because I definitely have road rage. <laughs> so, yeah. I, <laughs> so that won't work for the really hard things. Yeah, <laughs> true. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. That's yeah. actually pretty <laughs> awesome. You know, like actually making a list of things that make you feel happy. It helped me so much. Yeah, and I and I think that's part of like um you know another off tangent is like gratitude, right? It's almost like being like it's almost like a gratitude list. You know, like things that make you feel grateful and things that make you feel happy and that's another thing you know which I, I always felt when I was suffering from depression last year or the last couple of years you know people would be like T you know create a gratitude journal and I'd be like that's stupid what how is that gonna make me feel better but I will have to say I did last year I got so depressed that I was like okay I need to do whatever it will take to help me to feel better and I will say like, you know, a gratitude journal and like, yeah, being grateful. Like I went to see a bridge today and that, you know, felt so good. And I'm so grateful that I was able to go see this bridge. You know, things like, you know, having gratitude for the things that bring you so much joy or happiness or love. I think that's just also really important too. And it, I know it sounds cheesy. And like I said, I was one of those people for the longest time that was so resistant to um, creating a gratitude journal. And um, that's super helpful too. Yeah, and one thing that you can always be grateful for, uh, no matter what's going on, I mean, what, whether you're in pain, whether whether everything seems to be going wrong, um, remember that you exist. You know, existence is, is priceless. I mean, think about the alternative, right? I mean, you're here and you're looking at stuff and you're having experiences and that's just a totally irreplaceable miracle and uh, you know sometimes it's gonna feel good and sometimes it's not gonna feel good but you're feeling the whole time yeah you're aware yeah. And, and you you know it's um, that's that's definitely something to be thankful for and not to take lightly I, um, yeah and, and as far as bridges go you have some beautiful bridges here in San Francisco. <laughs> we do we do actually <laughs> we do yeah, every time I drive over the Golden Gate Bridge, I'm always like, wow, this bridge is really beautiful. It's true. It's true. I, I'll say, like, the Bay Bridge is, well, I used to have a view of it, um, but, you know, I used to, I, yeah, even when I drive over over it, sometimes I'm like, I don't appreciate it. But actually, when I was driving uh, back from the from uh, camping, I, I did drive on the Bay Bridge at night, and it was really beautiful. So you're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah we do have some nice bridges. You guys get to look at them every day. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, universe, for, uh, you know, 
I'm, I'm grateful that I get to experience these bridges whenever I want. <laughs> Well, thank you again, Jeff. This was really, this was really, you know, I, I, this is something that's actually really dear to me. Uh, the Phoenix Chronicles, you're my second person um, to do it. And I thank you so much. And I really feel like during these times, you know, all of us, we always have something that we have to overcome. And I really hope that Jeff's story and some of the things that we talked about were really insightful and were helpful to you. So. Thank you for watching the video and if you haven't subscribed yet to my channel, please do and please like it and please comment and share with us if you, you know, if you have any comments, if you want to share your story or anything like that, um, please do so in the comments. Um, so thank you again. Thank you, Jeff. And uh, until next time, till our next Phoenix Chronicles. Bye. <laughs>